Start your week smiling with your friends, Kathy Zant and Michelle Frechette. It's time to get ready for some weekly motivation with WP Motivate. Happy Friday, Kathy. Happy Friday, Michelle. Here we are. Oh, Maybe my goodness. Another week. TGIF. I have my voice back. It's a good thing. All the things. Yep, your, your glow is back. You're uh, <laughs> recovered from all of the word camping. Yes, the glow is a filter, though. Don't let the glow surprise you. <laughs> that's, that's 100% a filter on Zoom. <laughs> and some lovely oh, lighting. that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I am recovered. I'm still a little sore. Like, you know, I'm not used to being physically as active as I am when I'm gone for a week like that. So um yeah so yeah but next week I'm on vacation and I have four oh, days booked into you. an Airbnb just to do bird watching and nature photography so back in grounding oh, myself oh my back gosh, into that's... my element yeah looking forward to it that is so awesome good for you, thank you. good Thanks. for you yeah. thank you about time apparently, huh apparently I have a vacation happening next month but mm -hmm. it just kind of came up out of the blue. I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, yeah, so here, here are two vacations. Absolutely. Here, I got a water. I'll, I'll, I'll raise my water to you. <laughs> I've got my, how about how about this for a segue? I've got my uh, WordPress.com uh, oh. Tumblr thingy. That oh my I got gosh, it's like you, just, like you just set me up on purpose for that <laughs> one. Okay, so what we're talking about today is the 100 year hosting URL, you know, whatever plan that was released last week during WordCamp US that for 38, yeah. no, wait, no, wait, wait, you have to say this like a used car salesman, for the low, low price of $38,000, you can have 100 years of hosting, 100 years of your domain name guaranteed for 100 years guaranteed is a little scary when you're talking about a hundred years right like if yeah. if you like well, think back a hundred years ago what was happening in like where it's what 2020 like my year is right 2023 we hadn't even yeah, hit what prohibition was yet in 1923 <laughs> the, the great depression 1929 yeah. had not happened yet it was the roaring 20s mm -hmm. and we had all kinds the stock of crazy market stuff crash. was happening. Yeah. Most people didn't own right? cars. Most people didn't have yeah. telephones in their homes. Hitler was still painting, I hope. He was. <laughs> I I think he was still an art student. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right? We hadn't hit World War II and all the atrocities of that. So it's amazing if you think about, like, let's say I bought that domain today. I mean, it would be nice if I could afford that domain today. But I, in a... In a in a dream world, let's say I, I pivoted michellefreshette.com for a hundred years. What the hell do I have to say that somebody wants to read in a hundred years? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think about building a legacy. But is, it, is your legacy something you say about yourself? Or is your legacy something that other people say about you? Or maybe both. I don't know. What are your well, I think it's that? a little bit of both. I mean, if if you think back to, let's see, an author, Rudolf Steiner, popping into my head, the father of anthroposophy and the Waldorf schools and stuff. So he was pretty active 100 years. I think it was about 100 years ago. Edgar Casey was very active 100 years ago, and he was doing psychic readings for like all the rich and famous people people and stuff and mm -hmm. I was just fascinated by all the like esoteric mystery schools and stuff that was happening like doesn't seem to be happening now anymore but like a hundred years ago it was the it was the rage if I was alive a hundred years ago I would have been into it books it was all books and so like mm -hmm. Edgar Casey, like he did these psychic he was the sleeping prophet you I heard these stories of like people who had an illness would come to him and he would go to sleep and his secretary would write down everything that he would say on, in this trance state. And like people would say like, oh, I've got this weird illness, blah, 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 blah. And he'd say, OK, go to this go to this uh, pharmacy in Cincinnati on 7th Street and have them get oil of smoke. And they'd be like, 
okay, okay. that's what he said to do let's go find it so they'd go and the place would be like we don't have oil of smoke and then they'd go back and say they don't have it like you said it was there tell them it's behind the purple bottle and they go back it's behind the purple bottle like crazy weird stories but the cool thing about Edgar Casey is like that there's like this whole foundation where they took all of his readings and they're all like archived in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And you could like go read all of these readings and mm-hmm. things that he would say about like health and spirituality and the thing. He was really super Christian and that he did readings about reincarnation and past lives and all this stuff. And it was like kind of challenging for him that like when he was in trance, this stuff would come through. There's that there's an intense legacy there. They documented yeah. every reading. Mm-hmm. It's a life's work. And whether or not I ever need oil of smoke in Cincinnati, probably not, right? But you never know. The fact that that was, you never know. But I'd like, like I think back a hundred years ago, and yeah. and that legacy exists. What am I writing? It, it kind of actually, when when they announced this, I'm like, oh, cool, marketing gimmick. We got, we're all going to be talking about this now. But it really kind of put me into sort of the state of like the words that I write and that I have online, the internet is going to, I hope be around in a hundred years. Yeah. And my words are going to either going to be a record of whatever inspiration and creativity came through me, or they're going to be complete garbage or they're going to be memes. I don't even mm. know, but everything we're putting out there, I think it does have an impact and it changed. It changed the, the, it changed the weight that I give to my mm-hmm. own writing. So like I'm writing my blog post for this week. I wrote like my WordCamp thing, my retro on, on WordCamp, but I'm writing another blog post and I am thinking about the next hundred years and like, what is the meaning? It really mm-hmm. changed the way I think about my own writing. So I think, yeah. I think this is pretty cool. I do too. I just think like if I was actually going to do it, would I make it be like all about me or would I make a project that could people could continue to, to contribute to for a hundred years, right? So I don't know. I mean, I haven't really. It's funny to me in a lot of ways, right? Because when I think about it applied to myself, I'm like, mm, I don't know. But I can think of a lot of things. Like I think back to like we all are aware of archive.org. Like I don't ever want that to go yeah. away, right? right? Um, and I'm gonna use a word that's pretty ubiquitous in when WordPress, but Gutenberg. There's prior to there being Gutenberg blocks and whatever, there is the Gutenberg project, which actually archives online works of art or work, I'm sorry, written works that are no longer, mm-hmm. that are in the public domain. Ugh, struggling with words today, but you can find <laughs> entire um, books on the Gutenberg project that you can read online because they're in the public domain. And so those are available to people for years and years and years. And when you think about the censorship that started happening here in the United States recently, um, and that has happened over time, right? The book burnings um, during World sure. War II, you know, that there's so many other countries right now where North Korea, for example, they're really, they're, they really control yeah. what you have access to, right? So the idea of having an open project like that, that people can contribute to where somebody who's in Florida and can't get a copy of the handmaid's tale in their public library could still access it online. Yes, of course you can buy things, but not everybody has the ability to just buy the books that they want. So finding things like that, and that's not in the public domain. I understand that, but in general, I'm speaking to be able to have access to some of those things online that then people could, those kinds of have stories could, are not lost, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, we've been through some censorship, like in the past 20 years, like the, the media, I remember when I was in college, I remember doing a, a talk on how media was conglomerating into, and pretty soon it would be like four companies that control all of the media. Oh, what a soothsayer I was. But like the media (laughs) is controlled by a lot of, it's just like a a small number of corporations. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some conspiracy theories that it's all like BlackRock anyway. So like BlackRock controls Mm -hmm. all of the mainstream media. And I think like this idea of giving, giving um, a solid foundation for, for like individual um, journalists 
um, to be able to to research and communicate their work, the investigative journalism, anything mm-hmm. like that, or perspectives, or um, in the medical field, like a doctor that finds research and that big pharma doesn't want to have put out those types of things to be able to like say, this is the work of record of everyone. And it's mm-hmm. not just one company that, you know, like owns CNN and well, everything's changed and Pfizer doesn't like this thing that you wrote in 1997 mm-hmm. and it's still online and oops, oops, lost that server, that kind right, of thing right. that, that the that the um, history of of what we're living in can't be conglomerated into just a few hands. It's all of us. It's your mm-hmm. experience. It's my experience. It's it's watching 9-11 and seeing something happen and a collective um, communication that's your perspective, my per- everybody's perspective of living through a large event like that and yeah. having that being solidified. I think there's a, I mean, that's the dream of what the internet is all about, that it gives everybody a voice. And I like the idea of not just giving everybody a voice, but giving everyone a history and a legacy. Because Mm -hmm. when we start thinking about what we're publishing online, it's not just landing pages that make a sale and it's, it's our thoughts. And, and a lot of people are just putting it on Facebook or Twitter or X or threads, or they're putting it on all of these platforms that are again, controlled by a lot of small or these large mm-hmm. corporations, a small number of them. And I love the idea of like saying, no, everybody's voice matters. And these deeper thoughts really matter. And let's mm-hmm. give those a legacy for so that future generations can look back and say, oh, well, big companies say this is how things were. But look at Mich- Michelle's perspective is pretty different. I wonder mm-hmm. why. And like, yeah. I, I think it we do the, humanity the other, a better service. The other thing I think it could be really useful for is like about, I don't know, 10 years ago, I had the thought that I don't need to save photos because I put them on Facebook and they'll always be there, right? Well, they're not always going to be there. Someday Facebook's going to go away. Probably it'll be, you know, or it'll be like my spaces. It's just going to kind of hang there or whatever. But if I don't download the photos from there that I really want that I didn't keep, they could be lost to me forever, right? Like, and and any we 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 don't rent space there. We literally were invited in, and we could get kicked out. So if your account gets suspended or abolished or whatever, then you lose all of that historical anything that you posted there. And I think about the yeah. fact that like you could set up, like for lack of a better idea too, but like a genealogy for your family. And have a project that goes back hundreds of years and that for the next hundred years, people in your family could continue to add to. You could have photo albums on there, complete albums that anybody in your family or organization or whatever could continue to visit and see and download and interact. And you could have forums like we do in Facebook and things like that for your own family to have and leave their legacy and comments for differently than it's when it's hosted on somebody else's platform and where they have control over so that much. right so right. while the yeah, price no, tag is still too to much <laughs> it's a great idea well, storing everything on facebook we're using that service we're mm-hmm. building our legacy we're building our history on someone else's land we are not paying for it there that means that we are the product we're being marketed to and our mm-hmm. information is all being fed to advertisers so that they can select who they want to serve ads to and we are the product and there's no promise whatsoever of that being there forever. It, it feels like it's going to be because it's been, it's gosh, in internet years that Facebook has been around forever, but there's no promise of it. We're, mm-hmm. we're using it for free. There's no, yep. we don't own it. We don't right. own which is anything why, that we put there. I mean, which is why we tell people WordPress instead of Wix or Squarespace or other yep. things where you own the installation, you put it on your own hosting, you can download it, you own that, you can port it someplace else as long as you're maintaining the backups you're supposed to maintain. Um, but with Facebook, you don't securing it for. I know, right? It's like, right, right. is there a way to download all your photos off Facebook? I'm going to be doing a little research coming up because the posting, I've done some great postings over there, but I want those pictures, right? Like, not all of them because I don't care about the refrigerator I sold four years ago, but there's a lot of other, <laughs> a lot of other photos of yeah. my daughter. It's like, you know, and, and a lot of those I had in, um, you know, paper printed 
photos, but I don't even know where all those boxes are right now. And if I could just download the ones that were important to me, that would be kind of cool. There's a way of doing it. I'm going to research yeah. it and we'll add it to the show notes for this Ooh, I love so that, that Thank you. you can go and you can go and uh, we'll also add a security checkup on Facebook because I just had somebody do that too. Ooh, of just like nice. making sure that the other stuff is private and making sure that you don't, yeah. you know, Candy Crush still doesn't have access to <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure stuff. Candy um, Crush probably has my <laughs> my blood type I don't know <laughs> and I haven't played Candy Crush in 10 years or however long I don't know yeah. years yeah years. exactly gosh man you remember the early days of Facebook when we were like throwing like pigs at each other Did, were you on that early like 2008 when it was just like you were poking Easter eggs. people and throwing animals <laughs> there was like the Easter egg hunt oh. you found Easter eggs everywhere in Farmville I did. I used yeah. to like. I literally went out of town, and one of my coworkers farmed my land for me in Farmville, so that I wouldn't come back to dead cyber crops. I mean, it was crazy though. Oh my gosh, that Craziness. is so funny. Yeah. That is so funny. We've been through a lot with you, Facebook. We sure have. That's right. That's yeah, right. I. I think you know my first take on this whole like hundred years thing was like good marketing because now we're all talking about it and Absolutely. if we're talking about it that's marketing right yes, so yes. I thought it was brilliant marketing but then I literally started thinking more differently about how I'm writing mm -hmm. so it, it was more than marketing it really did plant a seed for yeah. how I consider my words on the internet mm -hmm. that's a scary thought <laughs> I have just blathering up I just renewed a domain today that I think I've had for about eight years and have never developed because I don't really know how to develop exactly. I, I want it to be a WordPress site clearly, but I don't know how to put the yeah. infrastructure together for it, but it's the perfect domain for a hundred year domain. So we'll talk offline Ooh. because if I say it out loud here, then people are gonna be like, when are you building it? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, I paid 20, 20 bucks a year for this domain for the last eight years. I should probably do something with it sooner or, or let it go, but I just couldn't let it go this morning. Exciting. I had to pay for it again. Yeah. We'll talk after we, after we hit oh. record. If anybody else really wants to know, you can DM me. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. If you think you went in on the bottom line, it will not be a moneymaker. I promise you that because I only build presents for the community, gifts for the community. So I don't think it'll make money, yeah. but I think it's a good legacy piece. So we'll talk, we'll talk later about this, but yeah. All right. I'm int it, intrigued. I'm very intrigued. intrigued right and and if you are listening and we always ask you guys come on somebody message us we want it we want your <laughs> please please oh, people talk us. <laughs> it was so funny when we when we were talking about the people that we wanted to see at word camp and we like yeah. teased it of like did we drop your name oh my gosh like I there's know. some views we know we know you narcissists <laughs> out there <laughs> so <laughs> tell us what you name tell us what you would build a hundred year website the hundred year yeah, project, the hundred year website. What would you, what would your topic or your general idea be? Would it be family? Would it be project oriented? What would you, or what site would you visit that had a hundred year plan on it? We want to know a little bit more. I think it's fun to talk about. Yeah. For sure. I think it's brilliant. I can't wait to see what people have to say. I also, you know, it is, you know, there's that, that little bit of morbidity that it will outlive you, but I mean, everything's going to outlive us, not everything, like, you know, obviously, but my house will be here long after I'm gone. You know, there's the, my town will be here long after I'm, there's things that will be here after I'm gone. Um, legacy is one yeah. of those things, but also like, yeah, what are you building today that might actually still be helping people in a hundred years? Tell us all about it. Yeah. So I'm on vacation next week, so we will be skipping a week um, because I'm going to be out Ooh. with the birds. So I won't be doing a call in. So we, we will miss next week. We'll see you all the week after that. Um, and yeah, but in the meantime, let us know. We want to, we want to know. So I won't see you in a hundred years, Kathy, but I will see you in two weeks. <laughs> Sounds good. Have a great vacation. You deserve it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And well, uh, don't hang up yet. Cause I want to tell you my, my idea when we get off call off the call, but anybody else, you're free to guess, free to guess, but you know, whatever. I'll talk to you later. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for hanging out again. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. This has been WP Motivate with Kathy Zant and Michelle Frechette. To learn more or to sponsor us, go to WPMotivate.com.